Okay, we are back with a part two to a video that I did. You can check it out up here where I did something I don't typically like to do. I steered you away from buying certain fragrances for very specific reasons. For the most part, I think you guys received that video pretty well. There was one particular fragrance on there, Rasasi Hawass, that I, for a very particular reason, suggested you not buy. And some of the pushback I received was hilarious, some of it kind of threatening, but none of it surprising because I know how people can get about their fragrance choices in this community and people will fight tooth and nail if you say something bad about what they like. This is really good smelling liquid inside of pretty bottles. Nothing to get mad about. Wear what you love. I decided to do a part two. We're gonna expand on this idea a little bit. I have chosen five fragrances that for very particular reasons, I don't suggest you go out and try to get at all costs. Unless you've tried these fragrances, you absolutely love them. With or without compliments. Ooh, some of y'all gonna struggle with that one. Also, if you already happen to have these fragrances, it should go without saying, like I said, love what you love. What's gonna be different this time around is that instead of just saying, don't buy this, don't buy that, I'm gonna be offering alternatives. And it's really as simple as that. So let's dive right into it. Now I'm gonna keep the categories that we chose the first time around pretty much intact with a couple of tweaks. First one here is the same as before. We're talking about a fragrance that is overpriced because it's discontinued. An amazing smelling fragrance. But for the price that it costs to get it today, it's not worth it. We're talking about Issey Miyake Noir Ambre. I don't know why I always use that little funny accent. This is a beautiful amber fragrance. Kind of aromatic, spicy, but warm, sweet, kind of resinous, almost vanilla-like amber with a nice leathery backbone. Pretty complex for a designer fragrance, great quality for a designer fragrance, but it's not worth the 200 plus dollars you will often find it for online. It's just not worth it. It's not necessary to pay that money to get this fragrance. Again, unless you've sampled it, you absolutely fell in love with it, you can't live without it, then value is completely up to you to determine. But if you don't know anything about this, don't worry about buying it, unless you see it pop up at Fragrance Buy for like $60, $70, because that's what I did. I got super lucky and scooped mine up a few years ago. But one I would suggest instead can usually be had for under $20. This is not gonna be for everyone. Just because I like it, just because it's so cheap, doesn't mean everyone's gonna love it, so keep that in mind. I'm not guaranteeing this is gonna work for you, but this is coming from a Middle Eastern brand known as Latafa. They call this rock by wooden tints. So this is an alternative in the sense that it does kind of fulfill that same role. It is this warm, ambery, woody fragrance. It's mostly dark, it's mostly rich and sweet, but they're not the same fragrance. This is more of an ambery, woody, smoky oud with a rich caramel with vanilla. It's kind of almost gourmand in a way, but it's very, very woody and very smoky and very powerful. Just as luxurious and again, can be had for a whole lot less. Now, I can't say it smells the absolute most natural. You can tell that it is a good blend for what it is, but I wouldn't call it the most graceful fragrance. There is something a little bit haphazard about it because it's so strong. So do spray with caution, but I can easily say lovely alternative if you're looking for one. This next one is gonna make some people upset. So just hold on to your pants I'm not trying to ruin egos here but i don't really care for this fragrance all that much even though it's so popular this is coming from bond number nine it's called scent of peace for him the reason why it's on this list is because i believe it is pleasant but it's uninspiring for the price it's just a little bit too synthetic a little bit too scratchy for this niche echelon of pricing in the air it smells really nice it's going to get good attention it's probably going to get you compliments but even then if i smelled this in the air i would not think that this retails for what it retails for i think this is a classic example of a luxury mainstream scent i don't consider this niche i've talked about it before you can still come fight me if you want to along the lines of something you might find from louis vuitton or even some apart from the marley's fresher fragrances they come at this high price point a unique stylish bottle design but the juice you get is comparable to some lesser expensive designer fragrances and side note people say it's an aventus clone and you have another camp of people saying it smells nope. absolutely nothing like aventus what do i think is it a clone? No. Is it inspired by Aventus? Yes. I can say that with 
confidence. Fruity, aromatic, woody. I think you might as well spend less money if you're gonna get a fragrance of this quality. It doesn't scream niche to me. If you're gonna get this, I think you might as well go for Parfums Vintage, Emperor Eau de Parfum. This fragrance is self proclaimed as an Aventus clone, even though it is a bit of a twist. They're very clear about what they're going for here. I'm talking about the Eau de Parfum because I don't have the extrait, just in case you're gonna ask. This happens to be one of my most complimented fragrances to date. Now, frankly, I don't wear it that much anymore, believe it or not, even though it gets me so many compliments, that's not why I wear it. I don't call it a 10 out of 10, maybe like an eight or so. But as far as Aventus adjacent fragrances go, I think it's one of the best you can get and it's, almost half the price of bond number nine cent of peace for him even on the discount as you can find this probably about a hundred bucks this is going around 180 plus and again that's discounted so i think you might as well go for this all right our next category more of the same brand launches fragrance presents it as something for us to check out to get instead of getting other things but it's really nothing new now, in this case, I have to kind of beat the news home a bit and say, yes, this is a clone, so of course it's more of the same. However, how many clones of this fragrance do we need? Our moth Club de Nuit, untold. So, before some of you guys come into the comments calling me a hypocrite because I have talked about this fragrance, I haven't necessarily pushed it if you've been paying attention to my features. I've put it on your radar. I have shared my thoughts about it, but I have not said, this is amazing. You need to go buy it. It definitely surprised me when I first sprayed it. However, upon giving it some wearing, I find it a little bit lackluster as it dries down, which seems to be kind of the case with a lot of our moths fragrances. As I've most recently said, if you're asking me about scent, versus Baccarat Rouge 540, which is what this is cloning. I prefer Baccarat Rouge every single time. First couple hours of this, pretty dang good, gotta say, but they do diverge. Now I do need to apologize. I feel like the videos that I've done on this fragrance have contributed to the insane price hike that it has seen. And this is not new with our moth. We saw the same thing with the other new Club de Nuits like the Siage and Milestone. Both of those inflated in price once people started talking about it, raving. This happens with any product, but I don't like to be a part of that. And I feel kind of icky about it. So I do apologize. I'm taking accountability as a reviewer for contributing to that. I'm not trying to convey some inflated sense of self or ego. I did a video that got almost 100,000 views featuring this fragrance. So I think that had something to do with it in addition to other reviewers who of course did their own takes on it too but I do want to apologize. So sorry guys. However, that's another reason why I can't recommend this fragrance because of how much more expensive it is now. It's almost doubled in price since it came out. What do I recommend instead of this? Honestly, literally anything else that's original. We don't need another clone of Baccarat Rouge 540. If you like the original, maybe just save up for it. Anyway, let's move on. Redundant Flanker. The first thing I wanna say about this fragrance is that I understand why it exists. It makes sense to me and I'm not mad at it. I do like the scent. The problem is that it is a flanker to an already very simplistic scent profile. And honestly, all it really does to that identity of the original is it makes it fresher. A little bit. They didn't make it any more complex. It keeps the simplicity, but makes it fresher, which makes it redundant for me. We're talking about Dior Homme Sport 2021. I do believe this is redundant to its predecessor, Dior Homme 2020. Again, I understand why it exists. This is more of a woody, fresh fragrance, a little bit of muskiness, a little bit of that elmy resin, bringing that kind of piney, fresh feel but mostly woody here with a lot of isoe super. And this is heavier on the citruses. A little bit fresher, almost aldehydic in a way. There's a sparkling, clean feeling to it. But ultimately, they're the same fragrance, same scent identity. I do believe that the sport idea worked way better, way more effectively with the first Dior Homme Sport flankers. In relation to the original Dior Homme, that was a much more drastic and noticeable departure because they had a lot more to work with. It was a more complex scent profile, so they had more things they could tweak or take away or add, and it ended up with more variety. This case, we don't have a lot to work with, so they came out pretty much the same. What would I recommend instead? Well, they're both really good. I like them both. I would just say pick one, pick your favorite, try them both out, 
and whatever one you like more, get it, but you don't need both. And our final category, too basic for the price. This one's a little harsh. I don't really wanna imply that I don't like the fragrance. I do, but it is not special enough to pay the price that it fetches. And this is one of the newest hypes. In fact, this type of fragrance seems to be a trend. For 2023, this is gonna be what everything is cloning. This is gonna be the Baccarat Rouge. This is gonna be the Ganymede. This is gonna be the Aventus. It's this scent profile. So I do have to applaud the original for doing what it did. The original being Bulgari Tigar. You probably know what I'm talking about now. This is from Suspiro. It's called Vibrato. Honestly came to it late. I didn't know people have been talking about this for almost a year. I just started catching wind of it the past couple months and got myself a bottle from Max Aroma. I didn't really know what to expect because I didn't allow myself to truly look into it. I just saw people's videos coming up seeing how excited they were. I didn't watch any of the videos. I selected it. I got it, sprayed it, and I'm like, oh, Bulgari Tigar. Okay, this is a good smelling fragrance. Some people are saying it's a little bit more complex than Tigar. I agree with that. Ultimately in the air, I don't think those nuances truly come off, making it different from Tigar. The ultimate scent personality is really very much the same. And if you put them side by side in the air, I think you'd be hard pressed to tell them apart. Up close, yes, you could probably tell them apart. This is good but this is not $325 good. No, 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 no. For a bonafide clone in a niche bottle, I am disappointed. I'm disappointed, I just wish these brands would use their platform. You have this beautiful bottle design, you have all these fragrances they've created and they're just putting out stuff to get popular. I get it, you gotta make money, but I'm just disappointed to see that. Not worth it for the price. It's too simple, it's too basic, and also it's basically a clone. $300 plus clone, no. If I'm gonna recommend something that is a clone that even though they won't admit it, this is a clone. This is coming from Spirit of Kings and it's called Arrakis. Okay, and the funny thing is, is that these two fragrances actually have the same perfumer. His name is Christian Provenzano, and he perfumed both of these. Arrakis came first, Bulgari Tigar came out a few years before that, then came Arrakis, and then he did Sospiro's Vibrato just last year, 2022. So this scent profile is on the rise. I would just recommend this one because it's way cheaper. It's under 100 bucks. You're gonna get the same scent profile. Quality's good, performance is good. Maybe not quite as strong as the Sospiro, but just as good. You can get this one at Fragrapedia House. You can use the code LUX2023, save you some money, and you can get a decant there. So sample it first. If you want this scent profile and you're not looking for Tigar, then perhaps check out Arrakis. I know a lot of people are digging this stuff, and again, it is good, but it is not worth the price. That's it. Okay, I wanna know what you guys think. Let the games begin, let the war begin. I'm not trying to start a fight here. I'm not trying to make people mad. Again, if you're getting mad, look in the mirror and then take a breath, take a walk, drink some water, and let's keep it civil. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.